this is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. Going through mistreatment, and I'm telling you, I had tons of it. Mistreatment, disrespect, misunderstanding, people don't get you, people judge you, people got you sized up like they're the genius and all. Oh my goodness. People got so much to say about what you need to get together. Yeah, the moat and the beam situation. But my friend uh, who was a pastor always used to say, get the truth out of it, leave the emotion, uh, you know, drop the emotion, get the truth out of it. You can always grow, even if the person doesn't dish it out on a clean platter. If the platter's all nasty and messed up, get the golden nugget off of it, leave the trash alone. Don't get caught up in the devil's whirlwind of trash. But you will grow much faster the quicker you see the part that God wants you to see about you, no matter how wrong they are. And sometimes I'm telling you they're more wrong than what they're trying to correct in you. Leave that aside. Get what you're supposed to get out of it. Do what you're supposed to do with it. Ask God to help you forgive them and let, let, let it go and learn whatever it is he wants you to see in you. Because even Jesus said, who do people say that I am? And sometimes we have to ask, who do people say I am? Who does God say I am? Because we see ourselves straightforward, but everybody else sees the 360. Stuff we don't see. Walking out the bathroom with the toilet tissue hanging on the back of your shoe. Everybody sees it but you. You looked at the straight on. You looked at the 90 degree view. You can see yourself in the mirror straight ahead. But everybody else sees the 360 degree view. All around you. So always ask God to help you see yourself the way others, other people to, you know, the way they perceive you. It doesn't mean that's who you are. But it helps you learn more about yourself. It helps you learn how you come across. Um, there were times, I'm telling you, I got more correction. People were lining me up and straightening me up and telling me off. And, woo, I went through that for decades before it came to a halt. And every time I always had to deal with me. And I got tired of it. I'm going to be honest with you. I got tired. So how come, Lord, how come I'm always the one that's got to do the forgiving? How come I'm always the one that's got to do the adjusting? How come, how come, how come, how come? And it was as if God said, because I am helping you to bear much fruit. If you can take it, baby, you can make it. And you'll fly much higher. Then all your critics, when this all said and done, and the dust, all the dust settles, and the fans stop blowing all the crap around, when everything's done, they'll still be down here with the nee, 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 and you'll be way up there because you're pointing at yourself, you're focusing on God, pursuing growth, pursuing maturity, pursuing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Pursuing holiness, pursuing righteousness, pursuing his inner healing, pursuing his wholeness. You're reaching toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God while they're down here going nee, 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 nee. And, and they're trying to pull you down with all their nee, nee mess, picking on you, criticizing you, pointing the finger, judging you, misunderstanding you, not getting you at all. But all the time is all that unfairness is going on and you feel like you're being victimized by it. You're the target of the enemy, it seems like. You got a target on your forehead. God is helping you grow in leaps and bounds above your enemies. He rise you up above your enemies. Your enemies will be your footstool. Your enemies are not the people. Your enemies are their attacks on you, how the enemy uses them. But the bottom line is you will rise so far above as long as you focus on you and God and get yourself straight and don't worry about it. It's like, okay, here's a quick example. It's just a quick word of exhortation. 
I don't want to preach two sermons, so I'll, I'll make I'll make it short. Okay, let's say I have a daughter. Okay, Andrea is my daughter, and we come out the restroom, and Andrea doesn't know that she's got toilet paper hanging at the bottom of her shoe, and it's a long string of it too. Now I can sit there and laugh and say, "Girl, wait, wait, wait! Don't go any further. Look behind you." And then she could get a laugh out. Oh, thanks, mama, for not letting me go out and be embarrassed. It could be a nice little funny moment. I'd let her know. Or I could be the abusive mom. Have her turn your butt around and get that crap up off your shoe. I taught you better than that. Look at you walking out here. You didn't even look at yourself. That's why I don't take you nowhere. You don't know how to present you. I told you to check yourself before you walk out the door. I look at you with that crap on your shoe. You look like a fool. Both instances have let her know that she's got something on her shoe. Both instances have let her know to take it off and put it in the trash. But one of them is abusive. Now, you can get caught up in the abuse and the attitude, or you can say, okay, thanks, Mom, for letting me know. And inside, you're praying, Lord, help my feelings not to get hurt. Take that hurt out. That's not my problem. That's her problem. Her attitude is on her, not on me. I at least know that there's toilet paper at the bottom of my shoe. It's all problem solved. Now, let me have a nice day. That's where you grow in leaps and bounds while Mama Sita is still acting a fool when she's 90. So your responsibility is not how they acted or how they treated you. It's how you treat what they did, how you handled it. That, that, that drives me insane. Yeah, that, I know. That, is, that, that definitely triggers me. I know. That's what it's supposed to do. It'll trigger you until it doesn't bother you anymore. And when it doesn't bother you is when you see the person in a whole different light. It's not about you and them, and it's not about you. It's about baby girl got issues, but they're not mine. And when the Lord gets you to the point, and that comes through inner healing, when he gets you to the point where that crap bounces off of you like water off of a duck's back and cannot penetrate any longer, you know, you got the victory in that area. And guess what? You'll find out. They stop doing it to you. They don't know. It's a spiritual thing. Right. But it, but when that door gets locked and shut, God opens a door no man can open. God shuts a door no man can open. Or however that goes. The bottom line is when he seals that thing and the healing is done, that attack will stop. That so attack the, will stop. So, so the more, you know, at least try it. To make a different change, you know, adjust our attitude towards a situation like that. Exactly, so, exactly. Their 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 stupidity is on them. It's it's like okay, Rashad, picture me as a little three year old girl, and I go up to you, and you're in the mall, you're all dressed to the T, you're looking fine as wine, you're looking cute, you're smelling good, you're looking good, you know, you got it going on from head to toe, and I come up there and I look at you and I say, look at you. You got big feet. Ooh, you you got big eyes. Ooh, you're a giant. You're an alien. Now, if you can tell that I'm mongoloid retarded, retarded now, think about it. Would that bother you? I'm three years old. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was thinking to myself, I'd be like, oh. Probably. Yeah, a little thirty-year-old. I can't. I can't help myself. I just, I just okay. Things like that. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you what happened to me years ago, and because I'm trying to get you to see a perspective. My friend Addie and I were walking home from high school in Brooklyn. This was in Brooklyn. I had never experienced racial attacks in my life. 
But we were uh, uh, going on 15, 14, 15, right in there. We were coming home. We were walking home from school. And our school was in a white neighborhood. We were walking through a white neighborhood. I mean, all white neighborhood. We're not talking mixed. Now, as we're walking, this little four-year-old boy, and I was very insecure back then, but not in, in the area of race, so it didn't affect me. The little four-year-old boy was in his front yard, and he's looking at us. Look at that nigga. You're two <laughs> niggas. What are you doing, you jigaboo? Go back to Africa and climb up on the trees. And, I mean, he was just doing all the racial stuff. Addie and I fell out laughing. It looked so stupid. It sounded so stupid. We thought it was funny. It was like it had no effect on us. She didn't have any issues. I didn't have any issues in that area. So it didn't affect us. And it was a little boy. It was a little boy. What harm could that little boy do? It was obvious to us he learned that behavior from his family. So, you know, because kids don't that trip probably, like that. That little kid. No, 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 no. No, we didn't. I, I really would have. I probably would have got up in his face and punched him. Oh, wow. Hey, okay. Okay. So, no That's one. How I handle that. Like, it makes me angry. So I got you. So, that angry. shows you right there, it's an area of prayer. When, when people teased me about my weight when I was younger, that would get me angry. So, I get you. That would get me angry. And I would, when I got saved, that was one of the areas I had to pray on the most. Lord, I don't want to be sensitive about my weight. I don't want to get so easily upset when somebody says this about me or somebody says that about me or somebody gets on my case. I don't want to be so easily affected. So I'm asking you to do all the inner healing you can so that that crap rolls off of me like water off of a duck's back. And now, guess what? I don't get that treatment anymore. Because if somebody Somebody's came at me with, if somebody came at me with that, I would look at him and say, number one, speak to me with respect or this conversation is over. That would be the first thing I'd say, because my confidence level from the inner healing God gave me, because I pursued that healing. See, inner healing is a key to making life so much easier. You are not so easily affected by whatever storm, whatever fart, whatever attitude blows your way. You're not affected. But now you are because you're still in the developmental stage. So don't get down because you react. Just take it to God. That's the only one that can readjust your reaction to the nonsense that people throw in your face. You're just human. Naturally, you're going to react. But the more God heals you, the less you react. And you'll see it. It comes from healing. That's what it comes from. So that's why I'm always pushing you guys to bug God for his healing. Nag him for his inner healing. Because it makes your responses so different. Healing makes a big difference in your responses. God taught me that in different episodes and different uh, 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 areas in my life. And it was such an eye opener to realize last year I was like this. This year that person's doing and saying the same thing. And I realized it's not them. It was me tripping. I can see they didn't mean anything. I couldn't see it before because I was looking through defensive, sensitive eyes. But when God did the healing, it was no longer an issue, and I could see it for what it was. And I wasn't upset. And I realized what a difference when healing comes. How differently do we see things? Mm-hmm. So, anyway, uh, that, that's just my little quick word on it. It's, it's natural to get upset, Rashad and Andrea. It's natural. What God does is the supernatural, and he raises you above those reactions through inner healing and that is the key so you keep pursuing it and at 30 it'll be different 
At 35, it'll be better different. At 40, it'll be like, whoa, look at me, like the palm tree. Oh, I'm growing so fast, my palms are spinning. Yeah, you will find that the growth the faster you grow is the faster you deal with those reactions. As soon as you feel that bubbling up in you and you want to commit hotty kati, you want to kill somebody, you want to choke them, you want to take the life out of them, whatever. Lord, they're getting on my last nerve right now and I'm ready to cuss them out. Take the anger out, please, in Jesus' name. Say it real quick before you allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. Watch how that works. <laughs> that helps you while you're going through the stage of not having to feel it. While you still have to feel it, you can still take the feelings that you're feeling and say, God, I'm hating right now. Take that out. I'm angry right now. Take that out. I want to cuss them out. Take it out. Shut my mouth because I want to tell them off and put them all the way in their place and put my foot on top of it when I get through. Help me, Lord. Take that negative feeling out. Take the anger out. Take the hurt out in Jesus' name. You constantly, I constantly had to do that. Because I cuss, I cuss a sucker out in a minute. <laughs> no, no. Uh -uh. Not that. Woo! Oh, yeah, baby. Y'all didn't know me. I laugh at Rashad and Andrea. Because I was the I was the master of emotional crippleness. I was an emotional cripple. I could ball you out when I I mean and do it at a hundred miles an hour. I can't talk that fast when I'm not upset. But if I'm seething and I'm angry, boiling, ready to explode, I can talk at a hundred miles an hour. The way a Puerto Rican speaks Spanish, that's the way I speak English. You'd be like, what did she say? I gave you a mouthful, baby. But I said it so fast, you probably couldn't understand it. Try to get me to talk that fast when I'm ch chilled and mellow. Can't do it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. So when, so when somebody is jabbing, dad, 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 dad. I'm under my breath, Lord. Take, get my emotions out of this in Jesus' name. Shut my yeah. mouth, Lord. Shut down my attitude. Take the hurt out because I'm about ready to put my foot where the sun don't shine. I'm sick of them. Lord, help me forgive. Oh, no. I can just imagine you thinking that. It's just it's just comical. It yeah, like exactly. That. Exactly. And it is yeah, and, and the further you get from it, the more funny it is when you look back at it. But boy, when you're in the thick of it, whoo, you need Jesus. Yes. That is something. But that is that is your biggest weapon, is taking every one of those feelings you get, every one of those nasty thoughts, and saying, here you go, Lord, it's on you. It's um let me let me stand up and do this illustration. Whoever can see me, tell me who you are. Um, I'm, I'm going to do something real quick. Now, somebody has a funky attitude. All right. Andrea, here's that kid that makes you want to kill him. They throw something at you. They throw something at you. You bat it away. Rashad, your grandmother gets on your last nerve. She lays a guilt trip at you. She throws it at you. You bat it away. Who do you bat it to? You don't just bat it out. You bat it at God. God can catch it no matter where you bat it. But you call his name, Lord. Take it away. Take it away. Take the emotion away. Don't let me feel that. It's like playing volleyball. Somebody bumps the ball. The other person stands there. They pop it back up in the air. They set. And then the person that's supposed to spike jumps up and bam, they spike it over the net. That's the way we are supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do. With all the attacks, with all the verbal abuse, we are to spike that thing right back down the devil's throat. We don't hold the ball and catch it. 
look at it. See, this is what this is what we do normally. This is what human beings do when we're not depending on God to deal with our emotions and our our wounds and all that, our, our sore spots. We sit and our offenses. We sit there. We catch the ball. If Satan pops it in our face or somebody, whatever, we, we got the ball. We catch it. We're looking at it. Oh, I'm going to tell you all. I'm so sick of you coming at me like that. No. Guess what? Screw you. I could care less. Forget you. I don't want to be bothered. And nobody told us to catch the ball. Drop that sucker. Leave it alone. That's their problem. Their problem doesn't have to be yours. If I threw a bucket of dog dew at your face, are you going to stand there and catch it? Or are you going to jump out of the way? That's the way we have to respond to people and their nonsense. So now that you've had your volleyball lesson, Let's go on to the word. Anybody else, Lynn, or anybody have anything to say before I move on to the word? Yeah, I'll, I'll just add in one thing to what you just said. Uh, I came across where I was working uh, or talking to one of the homeless guys, and he's sitting there telling me, oh, this guy took my thing, and I got in a big fight with him, and I this and I that. I said, well, you know that you're not supposed to leave your stuff left alone. I said, you know that's the law of the land for the homeless. Right. Well, what are you leaving your stuff alone for? Right. And he says, well, blah, blah, blah. And I said, besides, the Bible says if someone hits you on one cheek, you turn the other cheek and give it, give them the other cheek. Uh huh. And if, if and if someone takes your coat, give give them your your pants as well, or whatever it was. And he says, that's not in the Bible. I says, oh, yes, it is. He yep. says, well, I'm going to check on it. That's cute. <laughs> and so he goes and checks on it the next day. He says, you know, I went to my pastor, and he didn't know it, but you're right. It was in there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Anyhow, so, uh, so we had a talk about that. Yeah. No, you just leave it alone. I mean, you know, if, you, if you're stupid enough to leave your stuff on the street, then you pay the price. This is it on top of it. Right. If, if you're trying to get like God, God would just give them another cheek or give them another piece of clothing. Right. Let them have it. Right. Yeah. yeah, let them have it. That's right. That's right. But yeah, that's, that, that was uh, the story that fit with yours. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else before I get ready to go into the word? Okay, then that means y'all ready for me. 